Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here. In a couple of days, I'm gonna be flying down to visit my mom. So I wanted to get a video out before I left that addresses a question that was asked just recently. And I thought that would make a great video topic. And that is, should I use refillable cartridges? Or if I can, should I just go ahead and refill my original OEM cartridges? Which one is better? Stay tuned, we'll be right back and we'll address that question. Hello and welcome back and if this is the first time you land on this channel, it must be because you are interested in printing photos at home. And if that is the case, don't forget to subscribe and click on that bell so that you don't miss anything we upload. Before we begin, I wanna give you a quick rundown again as to what can be done with photo printing, not just on paper. I am now printing continuous tone images on a mug, on a ceramic coaster. Look at that. And of course, on aluminum. And this is absolutely breathtaking. I'm gonna be doing a lot of this. I have some more media ordered. I also have some two-part liquid coating that is to be sprayed on many types of substrate to allow you to do this kind of uh, work. The work that some of these folks are producing on aluminum is absolutely breathtaking. It is such a different look opposed to, for instance, just printing on paper. It's a totally different animal. And I'm gonna be doing a lot of this lately. Uh, I am limited by the size of my heat press as this needs to be sublimated. So that is the only limitation. I will be able to do as big as 15 by 15 and that should be quite nice. Now, let's go ahead and address the question which had to do with whether I should just use refillable cartridges or should I go ahead and simply try to modify or if I can directly refill my original cartridges? Well, you can and you can't. Sometimes you can, sometimes you cannot. But let's go ahead and address something very um, popular, the 3880, 3800, PA100, the R3000. They all have the ability to be refilled. They have refillable carts that can be used on all but the PA-100. Europeans can use it, other countries can use it. We cannot, however, but still I am using them because I have a chip decoder on my printer. But this is what a refillable cartridge looks like. You have a pressurization port. I usually keep that covered. You have a controller chip. You must get an original color matching. In this case, this is light black. So you need a light black chip to go under the controller chip. And that is required for ID purposes. And then you have a priming port right here that you have to actually prime the cartridge after you refill it. So there is an operation that you have to perform. It's not just refilling it, say here, I modified these to refill them while they are still in the printer. But that's not the way they come. They only come with one plug. So you add the ink here, and you will notice that this little circular chamber here will be devoid of ink. You will have to prime it. That chamber will then fill up with ink, and ink will be available then to the printhead. Otherwise, nothing doing. It's not gonna provide ink to the printhead. So there are things that you need to do, you have to know how to do. Once you get it all done, it's pretty much uh, pretty reliable. Um, if you can see, take a look at the internal compartments. There is no ink bag in these cartridges. Now, is that good or is that bad? Well, if you are really a picky person, you don't want your ink to come into contact with air that's being vented to the cartridge in order to allow for the ink that is being depleted or taken out of the cartridge. So there is air constantly in contact, but then again, that's the way it is with every refillable type cartridge. So what can you do? Well, 
In this particular case, you can actually modify these cartridges. There is a Mylar internal ink bag in here. And so ink never comes into contact with air, even the pressurization air. You will not come into contact. These have the little tip here for the pressurization that allows air to push against the bag and keep it pressurized at a certain level. There is no such thing as a bag in these. The air is literally pushing against the surface of the ink as the ink is used up. And so you might think that's good or that's bad. Well, it all depends. Now to refill them, once you modify them, it'll allow you to refill them. The reason we have to do that is because these cartridges have a one-way valve. You can take ink out, but you cannot put ink in. Now, after you follow my process to modify the cartridges, you will all of a sudden be able to add ink. Now, this one is not modified, so I will not be able to demonstrate that. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to draw all the air out and you're going to add the required volume of ink to fill the cartridge to full. Now, in order for you to reset these chips, these are auto reset, okay? When they go empty, you remove the cart out of the printer, you add ink to fill it up. I would recommend that you keep them topped off at all times because you don't want that priming chamber to ever go empty. I do not trust the reporting of ink levels to actually keep with the actual ink levels. So you might be reporting that you have ink, but in reality, you are at the point where you are about to use up the ink in that priming chamber, and that would cause a problem. You would have to re-prime the whole system. Not so with these. Once these are reset, and again, to be able to reset them, you have to catch them before they reach, say, 15%, 20% from empty. I like to reset them at about 100 gram total per weight. What does that mean in real world? data. Full is 150, empty is 60. So I want to catch it around 100 grams total weight. That means there's sufficient ink in the cartridge. That means that the chip has not dropped below that dangerous level. Well, we, it will not reset. Now, the chip resetters that I'm using, the cartridges that I'm using, the printers that I'm using, uh, maybe the firmware is the good one, but I have heard reports of certain users not being able to reset certain colors. So this is not a foolproof system. For me, it is working because for some reason, I can reset even the ones that people cannot reset. I'm able to reset them. I pop them into my printer and they are fine. Now, when I send them back to folks, it may be not recognized. It may be recognized, but most of the time they are recognized. So I don't know what's going on why I am able to reset them and some folks cannot. Now, there is one resetter called a QE589. It's about $25 to $35 on eBay. You can get them readily. And those are the ones that we are using to reset these cartridges. So this is two options you have. Either go with a resettable, you will need a set of OEM chips to write underneath that controller chip. And with these, of course, you can reset them in situ. You can refill them. And this will provide you the most reliable uh, ink delivery flow to that P800 if you're running with a chip decoder or European model, or a 3880, 3800, and so on. Now, the larger Epsons that utilize the same type of cartridge, just larger, they have the same port. Yes, they can be reset as well, and the same port can be modified just as easily. Now let's go over to some other style of cartridge. So here we have two types of cartridges. One is a refillable one and one is an OEM one. In this case, for the, I believe this is the R2880. In this case, yeah, there's no way you can fill these original cartridges. So you don't really have an option other than use a good refillable cart, reliable that is one that is easily kept primed, and one that can provide sufficient volume. Now, most of these are supplied with an auto reset chip, which means that when it reaches empty, you simply remove the cartridges, fill it up, pop it back in. Now, again, because I don't trust the ink level reporting, I do not want to lose my priming. So 
I want to keep them topped off. As they reach about a half in place while they are still in the printer, I will remove this. I will replace it over the vent. Right now the vent plug is plugged and the fill plug is plugged. But in actual running condition, you would remove the vent plug. And so in order for the cartridge not to begin to drain, because it is installed, the pop -up valve is actually depressed and you could have a drainage of your cartridge. You're going to immediately take it out, take the plug out and plug that vent. So we'll use the other plug as an example. Right now then you can actually fill it up, keep an eye that you don't overflow, put the plug back in. In other words, remove it from the vent hole over to the fill plug and now you can continue printing. The ink level will still be half for instance. When it reaches empty, it'll stop working. You remove it. You can top it off again at that point if you wish. Pop it back in and it will reset to full. So these reset to full only as they reach empty. These can be reset, but I had not come up with a good way to uh, allow me to refill these. Very difficult. There is a myriad of channels and chambers and mazes inside this cartridge. You see that, that round indentation that is a diaphragm. There's a process that I reported on a long time ago, probably my best viewed video, where you can actually forcibly pop that diaphragm and allow you to then directly refill. It can be done, but believe me, the company that was actually selling a contraption to allow you to do that, stop selling it. So there's problems with that system. You can try it and it might work. I have a video that shows you how to do that. If you wish, let me know and I will give you the link. But again, it's just, you know, you do it at your own risk. It works, but it can also not work. All right, that covers the majority of your Epson style printers. Large format utilizes this type of cartridge. Small format utilizes this type of cartridge. And again, you have no option really of refilling these. Some of the older Epson type cartridges that rode on top of the printhead could indeed be refilled, but you had to perform a rather difficult modification where you needed a little special valve. And those again are no longer sold by anyone. And I sold the ones that I had left because I didn't have any need for them. But again, you know, it can be done. There are other people that have figured out other ways. I don't see them as being entirely reliable, but they do work uh, if you do it just right. Now, Canon printers, most popular Canon printers, of course, Pro 100 and the Pro 10. Pro 100 needs to be modified. You have to remove the original ball, the so-called factory ball, drill it out so you can insert a plug and at that point, then you can fill up the liquid chamber with a needle or a bottle with a needle attached, such as these here. You simply use one of these. This is the most elegant way of doing it. This is a rather messy way of doing it because you have to then clean your syringes and your needles and so on. And say you have eight of them. Well, that's quite a chore after you get done refilling all of your cartridges. Another problem is constant introduction of this needle into the ink bottle. Possibly you may have to even introduce the syringe if you don't have a long enough needle. You're going to contaminate your ink with what? With fungal spores or everywhere, okay? And dye ink for the Pro 100, for instance, third party ink, will eventually succumb to this constant contamination of that ink. The biocide will simply reach its half life and you will get fungal growth. It will kill your printhead, period. It happened to me a couple of times. So what I recommend is use one of those bottles, get an alcohol pad, you clean the tip, you inject as much ink as you want to inject, take it out, plug it back up, clean that needle again, and just put the bottle back on the shelf. No syringe to wash, no mess, no fuss. So that is it for that. Now, gosh, I wish I had a printer that I did not have to modify its cartridges. Well, there is such a thing. It's called a Pro 10. It's called a Pro 1000. It's called the, what else? The Pro 1. Okay, well, the Pro 1 needs a little bit of modification so that you can use the 
single-use chips that you have to buy, but you can directly inject ink into the cartridge without any modification. Here, you just simply add ink to the exit sponge. Drip, drip, drip. When it reaches the top, you squeeze it a little bit. You will see a flood of ink. You let go, it will come back into the uh, cartridge. There is an internal ink bag in here. It's more of a uh, like an accordion type thing, highly engineered system. But again, no single modification required. You can directly fill these from the instant you get them. So that is really one of the top, top printers that I recommend for those of you who want to experiment or at least save money by refilling. Um, again, there are resetters available. No resetters available for this, but there are single-use chips available and also auto-reset chips. These are directly filled, okay? No modification required. The only thing you have to do is remove this cap and replace that floating chip holder with a auto reset chip and then you're good to go. No need to replace chips as they each go empty like you have to with the Pro 1. The Pro 1 will go empty. You have to replace that chip just like when you are using OEM cartridges. When they go empty, you remove the cartridge. Most people will throw them out and you put a brand new one out of the box that has a new chip, right? Single use chips. So that is all that's available at this time for the Pro One. So that is it. There are disadvantages and advantages to refilling. There are some printers that allow you to refill the original cartridges and some printers that simply refuse to allow you to do that. And so you have to rely on either refillables or God forbid, compatible cartridges. Now, should you use a compatible cartridge or a refillable cartridge on a Canon printer? Absolutely not. Stick with the, let's see, what do we have here? Stick with the original cartridges. They provide the best ink delivery. They are the best fitting cartridge. Believe me, when you buy a refillable cart or a compatible cart, the fit in the actual printhead will be so sloppy that I have actually seen resellers tell you to put a little piece of cardstock on the side so that it'll take away that slop. Are you kidding me? Yeah, that actually happens. I've actually seen that demonstrated in videos from several refillers and resellers. And so, yeah, the best way to go is what? Use your original cartridges on your Canon. Do not ever consider using refillables. Some people will tell you, oh, it's okay, I've done it all the time and it works just fine. Okay, fine, you continue doing that. I will not subject my Pro 100, my Pro 10, or any other Canon printer to a really sloppy fitting, non-performing compatible card or refillable card. It's just not worth it. Print heads are expensive for those printers, and you don't want to have to replace them unnecessarily. All right, that is it. Now, what is happening? When I come back Saturday morning, I thought I was going to do a live stream that evening, but guess what? We're going to the dinner theater with the drama club kids from the school. I can't be doing a live stream at five o'clock. At five o'clock, I have to be at the restaurant to wait for the kids to arrive. We're gonna be dressed up in suits. The girls are gonna have their uh, evening uh, dresses on and they're gonna be performing and we're gonna watch a play. We're gonna have dinner. So what I will do is we're gonna move it to the same time, five o'clock p.m. on Sunday evening. So that is it, I'm gonna tell Mike Cheney from Q Image that I moved it up. Now, I'm also going to contact Precision Colors before I go to Florida and invite him to join us this coming Sunday. We'll see. I hope he does. If he doesn't, that's fine. I understand. But hope it'll be one super awesome live stream. I hope to have all of you there. Take advantage. This is unheard of. I never suspect that he would agree to join us on a live stream. So there you go. That's a good incentive for you guys to join us that evening. Now, don't forget to consider buying my merch. Not necessarily this, but of course, the ones that promote the channel. They are all here. Here's my little coaster. We have beautiful mouse pads. Work really nice. The surface is so smooth. And look at the way this just flops. Some of the 
cheaper mouse pads that I have seen in office supply stores don't even come close to these. These are really good. I'm using uh, them right now. My wife is using them upstairs. My nephew is using them. My grandson is using them. I made him a special one with a logo of the Black Panther, and he is tickled pink with that. So that is it. I hope to have one more video before I leave on Wednesday. Today is Monday. So I will have this up tonight. So hopefully I will have that second video. And if not, then I will see you guys on Sunday evening. I'll be able to monitor all of the comments, Facebook, and all of that while I am away. But again, this is an opportunity of a lifetime. I'm going to have family members I have not seen since I was probably 20. So it's been a long time. These are all my cousins and second cousins. They're coming to see my mom. My mom is not doing very well. So they're all coming down to Florida to see her from all parts of the United States. So I thought this is the chance of a lifetime. I just have to go. So my wife is not coming with me. It's only going to be for about three days. And I'll be back to continue doing what we do. Okay, so we will all see you on Sunday, 5 o'clock Eastern Time. Be there. It's going to be a doozy of a live stream. I hope it all pans out the way I have a plan. So, yes, I am a photo printing techie. And so are you. Happy printing, everybody. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.